Hi everyone, this is Donna Marie and today I want to talk to you about the heart and the mind-brain connection and how important it is to manage your emotions. Now, managing emotions can literally save your heart and I've had a bit of an experience, well I say a bit of an experience, a huge, a huge experience of healing my heart naturally and through my own journey of ma managing my emotional health and my depression and all of that stuff that really has been trapped in my heart not only in my heart but my heart chakra near my heart chakra in my actual heart itself now if we don't deal with emotions, this can really manifest as heart conditions. Cardiomyopathy is a huge, huge disease, which is a manifestation of literally a broken heart from emotional trauma and emotional um, stress, chronic, over a long period of time. And the heart cannot cope. So the heart wall actually thickens to protect the heart from any further damage so it's really important to manage your emotions and our heart is one of the biggest organs that is responsible for our, where our emotions come from you know all you have to do is feel it into a an emotion and realize oh my god it's in my heart or you know you saying goodbye to someone or you see someone again after so long and you f can feel that actual emotion in your heart so it's about taking time to listen to listen to your heart's wisdom to check in with your heart on a daily basis like how are you doing how are you okay are you supported is there anything you know that you can be doing to support your heart anymore being really aware of managing your emotions is absolutely key to maintaining the health of your heart the electromagnetic field of the heart is huger much more expansive than the electromagnetic field of our brain and this is how we can really feel people's emotions. This isn't just through empathy or through special clear senses. This is actually because the, the electromagnetic resonance and field of the heart is so huge that we can pick up and we can understand how that person's feeling and what's going on. Now for me, I've been able to really connect with people on an empathic level through my own journey and knowing to listen to the heart because the heart knows best and it does. There's this connection between the heart and the brain. It's the heart brain matrix and it's very much connected and we can heal our mind and we can heal our negative thoughts, our programming, our patterns, if we listen to our heart and vice versa. We can heal our heart if we reprogram and we, and we reframe the mind. So I want you to like really tune into your heart and ask your heart how it's feeling. Is there heaviness around the heart area? Does it feel tight? Does it feel restricted? Does it feel like it's pumping really erratically? Notice the next time you get stressed, the next time you're feeling depressed. When you get stressed, the heart actually speeds up. It's, it erratically speeds up, which then causes more adrenaline to be pumped, more stress more cortisol to be pumped around the body and then your energy is heightened to the point of break we get highly frustrated 
we get very trapped, we feel very stuck, and then this manifests in our heart if we don't deal with it. So if this happens every day, over a long period of time, like chronically, like every day you're getting stressed, every day you feel depressed, every day you feel anxious, your heart will pump and pump and pump. And, li and the more anxious you get, the faster your heart will pump. <clears throat> the more depressed and low you get, the less the heart will pump it slows down a lot and this could just manifest as like lethargy tiredness exhaustion because we're not getting enough blood around our body we're not getting enough blood pumping around enough endorphins from pumping around cortisol pumping around adrenaline all those things that actually can really be good for us when we need it so it works both ways and depression works with not having enough endorphins, not having enough, and having too much cortisol, having too much adrenaline. Sorry, not enough adrenaline. And anxiety works and it affects the body by having far too much adrenaline, far too much cortisol, and pretty much next to nothing endorphin-wise. So... It's really important to listen to your heartbeat and I really invite you to do this. So listen to your heartbeat the next time that you are stressed, you're anxious or you're frustrated. Because remember, our body has memory. We are 70% water. The thoughts you feel, the feelings you feel, your beliefs, your past experiences, programs, not only the water memory in your body, because water, it's been confirmed by scientists that water contains memory. So not only does that get reprogrammed for all of those negative emotions, which just stays in our body, in our organs. It's flowing around our entire body. But the, um, th those emotions, those self-limiting beliefs, those anxious thoughts, those feelings, those, all, of those, all of that stuff goes into the heart. Into the heart, into the brain, into, from the brain into the heart. Into the gut as well. The gut is huge, huge for emotional baggage, our fear, our shame, our guilt, all of those nasty, heavy emotions, resentment, grief, get really stuck in our gut. And it, I know this because I've dealt with it and I've been through it and I've been through journeys of my digestion being so bloaty and uncomfortable and really wanting to know what what is going on so i investigated this stuff naturally holistically through yoga through holistic modalities and realized my gut has had a lot of store trapped emotion in there so from releasing the emotions my gut is feeling the best it's ever felt in a long time and don't get the bloating anymore now the heart, I was having an achy heart for a long, long time. And I was like, my heart hurts, get a lot of pain here. I mean, my mum, bless her heart, she um, was diagnosed with cardiomyopathy herself. So this really was important for me to check in with myself and what's going on with my body to check that I am making sure that my heart is programmed for love, gratitude, joy, peace, all of those high vibrations constantly on a consistent basis. So if you think about everything stores memory, everything's memory. So hello Maggie, that's my cat. So everything we say, we feel, gets manifested in our heart, in our thoughts, 
It re rewires our brain. And over a long period of time, our brain has creates what's called neuro neural pathways, like neuroplasticity. It's like our brain actually <clears throat> creates new pathways of, of states. So that's all we ever believe. That's all we ever feel because we're programmed that way. And it's dangerous, more dangerous than you can ever realize. So it's really important to start practicing gratitude and raising your vibration every day. The water that you drink, I charge my water and I will be doing some videos on charging water and how you can do it yourself at home. Because we don't wanna be walking around with fear and all those low vibrations from stress. It just makes us feel very poorly and it can lead into a chronic heart disease. It's so serious. We don't get told this stuff. So it's my, it feels like my duty and my message, my mission, because I work with the heart, mind, body connection through my own personal journey, through healing myself, to teach others how to listen to the wisdom of your heart, to tune into that innate wisdom that your brain, your subconscious mind is telling you to listen to the emotions when they come up to not suppress them. Now I was on antidepressants for years and for me, I felt that they were suppressants and they are suppressants. They suppress your emotion. So they numb out, they numb out. They do raise the chemical in the brain. So it helps you feel better, but <clears throat> emotionally it's a suppressant. So it doesn't actually help you process emotion it helps you might give you a bit of a coping strategy but for me antidepressants never worked and nor does alcohol nor does drinking nor does binge watching tv nor does disassociative behaviors such as distracting yourself with so many jobs on that you just don't have the time to to even look at yourself so it's really important to listen to what your body needs listen to what your heart needs to forgive as well is a huge one it's a hard one for most people it's a hard one for me when I when I had to learn how to forgive not only myself but for others to forgive others but when you forgive, you allow the heart to be free. If you don't forgive, you allow the heart to, hard, to harden. You allow the heart to harden. It literally closes down. It literally closes in. Which is the scary part. So when we practice forgiveness... Look at this cat. Look at this cat. And when we practice forgiveness, we allow our heart to be free to heal. And when we get a broken heart, the strands around the actual heart like literally break. And it affects the heart phenomenally. Which is scary. So I would highly recommend checking in with your heart every day, noticing how your heart feels. Does it feel tight? Does it feel tense? Is there resistance around there? Is it restricted in any way? Is there any pain? And just being aware of what your heart is trying to tell you, because your heart will tell you what's right. You know, you listen to the heart, it will be always be the right answer most people tend to listen to the logical mind the ego which gets us in a lot of trouble and it can be quite destructive and 
unforgiving at times. We tend to do logic, especially men, they, they tend to do a lot of logical thinking these days and you know, men's mental health is sky high, more so than women because they do not listen to themselves. Mental health is phenomenal in men because they don't feel they can talk about it. They don't feel they can share their story or share or express how they feel because they're a man. And unfortunately, conditioning has led men to think that they have to be this protector and this the bread the breadwinner and all those things. But it doesn't do men any favour. So I love working with men and I love teaching men how to heal themselves naturally. And it's one of my missions, one of my visions to support men through mental health, through traumas to help them release and let go of their emotions that are holding them back and not only help people on a physical level on a mental level as well emotional level spiritually as well because if you can heal internally from your heart you can heal anything you can heal your your whole life if you heal your heart and you can literally transform your whole life into something incredible and amazing so, just listen. Listen. We're not told to listen to our bodies in this modern world, this chaotic world. We're told to do everything by the book. We're told to go to the doctors when this thing happens and they can't really give you support anyway because they're so busy. And don't get me wrong, there's some amazing doctors out there. They really are. They really are. But there's a lot of doctors out there that can't provide the support because there's too many people there's too many people to be seen they don't have the time they don't have the time to connect with clients you know or patients so and healing is never just straightforward it's not a quick fix it's very much a journey so my work that I offer is self-empowerment and transformation. I work a lot with the heart-mind-body connection, releasing all of the trauma in the heart, helping people heal from the inside out, and helping people to discover their true potential, their passions, their creative centre, their personal power, by letting go of self-sabotaging, self-limiting blocks and beliefs. To help people with their mindset and reprogram it for positivity and success. And my yoga is very much on the same lines as well. The heart-mind-body connection. Yoga philosophy and psychology. So yoga is a science as it is working through the chakra centers, the energy centers, there are amazing tools for trans for self transformation. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video and it's made you think a bit more about your heart. That's the aim of this video is to make you think more about your heart, to listen more, to be aware of what you're telling yourself, to be aware of your heartbeat when you're feeling stressed. It's making your heart work very hard when the more stressed you are. And if you go through your days, day in and day out and day in and day out, feeling that chronically stressed, one, body, one day your body will scream and it will manifest into either a heart attack or something along the lines of, and that is the reality, unfortunately. <coughs> Excuse me. So I just had to share that because it's so important. Our heart is our life keeps us alive yet we tend not to really tune into it or focus or nurture it or support it we tend to buy the latest gadget to fulfill our selves but actually it doesn't really bring us any support or healing it just numbs for a while and we get excited for a bit and then we're back to square one so i i'm really about 
telling people my truth and telling people how it is and if you are interested in working with me and supporting yourself it's, it's, if you think about it it's a self investment it's not a quick fix it's a self investment for living your best life your healthiest life, your happiest life. And it's not only going to radiate out into your entire physical body, emotionally, mentally, and physically, and spiritually, but it's going to radiate out to your children. And you'll be a better role model for your children, and then your children's children, and it'll just pass down. Because unfortunately, we live in paradigms. We very much live in paradigms. And by paradigms, I mean there's a lot of unawake people, and paradigms along the lines of people not listening to themselves people listen to the external the subliminal messaging the media all the brainwashing stuff that just does us no good instead of listening to what our body needs we're listening to what we're told that we need and it does doesn't get us anywhere it just traps us in cycles of negativity we work in jobs that we hate and we feel unfulfilled and then we end up spending all our wages on junk food and um, expensive gadgets like I said and addictive behaviours and drinking too much alcohol, eating too much food, like unhealthy food because we can't cope with stress and it's our body's way of suppressing our emotions and our stress is to like be addicted to something. But it only temporarily works for a bit and then the same the problem's there again and it's still there day after day after day after day so I help people with that and hopefully this video's made you aware if you weren't already a bit more aware of how you live in your life do you spend money on quick fixes that are just a waste of time? Do you spend loads and loads of money on just making yourself externally look good and feel good, but internally you're just broken? Do you feel that you are just unsupported or you're not supporting yourself, you can't support yourself because you're so overwhelmed and exhausted and tired and fed up because you have nothing to give because you've already given it all anyway? So that's, those are the, the type of people that I tend to work with and I help people with their, their struggles, their pains, their frustrations. I really love working and I predominantly work with um, 25 to 30 year olds who are going through a real tough time emotionally with anxiety with depression with fear and lack of confidence lack of self-love self-worth and i help i help them by coaching them into self-empowerment with all my healing modalities but i do work with other people as well i don't just work with that age of people but that's my predominantly that is the area of that's the age gap that i that i work with so remember, if you heal your heart, you can heal your life. Listen to your heartbeat. Listen to your heart's messages. Talk to your heart. Say what needs to be heard. If it's, if it's feeling tight, here, just underneath, if it's feeling tight or restricted in any way, then you need to ask whether that's yours, because it might be someone else's. Because we get energetically entangled with everyone else's stress and worries and fear. We're all energetic beings. We are all entangled with everyone else. So the first thing to do is ask, is that mine? And if it isn't, then you say, I release this back to origin with consciousness attached. And if it's still there, then generally down to a bit of unworthiness and a bit of trap trauma there. And that's why I help people release that, that, that stuck stuff that's in our bodies. So 
So hopefully this video has helped you. And if you haven't subscribed yet to my YouTube channel, then please do. And if you know anyone that could really benefit from my YouTube videos, then please share my YouTube channel with them. Again, I love hearing from you. Please comment below for any, any feedback. I just love hearing back from people. So have a great rest of your day and I'll speak to you soon.